a new Planet Fitness location is now open. To celebrate, you can join now for just $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. We're ready to welcome you with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Plus, you can check the crowd meter in our app for the best time to visit. Join the judgment-free zone today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. Hurry, this deal ends soon. New location now open in County Center. Join now for $1 down and $10 a month. Hurry, deal ends August 31st. Planet Fitness locations are independently owned and operated. See club for details. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino online. I was only playing for fun, so winning was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's favorite free online social casino. You, too, could have the chance to win life-changing cash prizes. Absolutely anybody could be like Mary. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumboCasino.com and play for free now. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of the winner. Welcome to the Unscripted Podcast. My name is Corby LaCroix, and the song you're hearing right now is called Great and Mighty One, available on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you get your music. But for now, here's your host and my friend, Aaron Conrad. Great Redeemer, God of grace. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Unscripted from my studios here in Old Hillier. And a uh, really interesting interview today. Um, my guest is a best-selling author of 15 books. She has two podcasts and her weekly blog, Joy for the Journey, and, and has been uh, named to the top 50 faith blogs for women. She writes a weekly column for Ministry Today, and her YouTube, or I'm sorry, her version devotionals have reached 4 million people worldwide. Carol, why don't you introduce yourself, and, and uh, we will go from there. Yeah, thanks, Erin. I'm so honored to be with you today. Um, yeah, I I just am a girl who's head over heels in love with Jesus. Erin is the way I describe it. My life has not been perfect. As a matter of fact, I've gone through a lot of stuff in my life, a lot of things, a lot of challenges, things that I never would have chosen, but I'd go through them all again to be the woman I am today. Mm. Because as you know, trials have a way of defining you, of strengthening you, of calling you to be a better person. And so um, I went through a deep, dark depression when I was in my 30s due to infertility issues. I lost five babies, four of them I oh. held in my hand. Oh my goodness. And so the de- depression was pervasive. I saw my medical doctor. I saw a counselor. But Aaron, it was really my faith that oh took me out of that pit of depression. And one of my sayings in life is don't waste your pain. So I'm determined not to waste the pain of that time in my life, but to use it as a springboard in ministry because Aaron, women, I mean, you can answer this about men, but depression is giving us all the one, two, three knockout punch right now. And so my voice is important in the battle against depression because my voice is the faith voice. Um, so that's sort of what got me started um, on my journey of ministering um, the power that's in the word of God. Wow. Um, the first few books you wrote, um, what, what are they? I, I assume they're in the same um, genre or, or same conversation um, in terms of what you just spoke about, or is, is that true or no? The first, first few books you wrote. Yes. Um, the first one was rooms of a woman's heart, which is a Bible study. And it's, okay. it's just a cool way to look at your heart, the dining room, the waiting room, the nursery where God speaks dreams and visions to you. Um, but my second book was called defiant joy. And interestingly enough, Aaron, since then, at least two more books have come out by that title with some very notable people. Um, But Defiant Joy is the story of my battle with depression Mm -hmm. and how the Lord gave me a joy that defies my circumstances. Aaron, listen, joy is not weak. Joy is not an elusive butterfly that that dances over the flowers in our lives. Oh no, joy is a warrior. you know, Nehemiah 8.10 says, we all know the end of the verse, but it says, be not grieved or depressed for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Right. So joy is, is the tool. It's the 
fighting arsenal that God has given to us to fight against oppression. Um, and th this is the deal, Aaron. The enemy is not after my marriage, my finances, my health, my children, or my destiny. The enemy is after my joy and how he tries to get my joy is through my health, my finances, my destiny, my marriage, my children, wow. because the enemy knows if he can take my joy, he can weaken me. Right. So joy is what makes you strong. Mm. Um, and so that was my second book, Defiant Joy. And then, um, you know, there, there were other books. One, one I love the title, Holy Estrogen, How to Make Your Emotions the Holiest Part of You. Um, I was reading my Bible one day, Aaron, and I realized, what? The Bible talks about human emotions. What? And so I spent a year circling emotions in the Bible every time mm. I saw an emotion. And then I categorized them into wow. acceptable emotions, emotions with boundaries, and emotions the Bible says, oh, no. You don't, you don't want to experience that. You don't want to embrace that. Like mm -hmm. fear and worry, bitterness, that's on the list of do not go there, according right. to scripture. Now, anger, we, we do get to be anger, uh, but no longer than 23 hours and 59 minutes. <laughs> and then we have to be over it. Wow. But, you know, so many of us have brought the anger from 20 years ago into today. Right. Um, and that's not healthy for us. That's, that's not a healthy way to do life. And Aaron, it was interesting. I did find out that um, according to the Bible, we get to have a broken heart mm. because the word of God says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Right. Um, so that was my book. But I want to tell you about one more book before we okay. land on my most recent one. Absolutely. Is that okay? Are we good? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, okay. So Aaron, in 2014, I was diagnosed with aggressive cancer. Mm. Um, and I was gobsmacked. Nobody in my family had ever had cancer before. And so, you know, you spend a week going through this horrific test um, where you're in machines and they poke and prod. And I was supposed to go to the doctors on a Monday to find out the protocol, how they were going to treat it. And Aaron, we lived in Buffalo, New York at the time. And the storm of the century hit Buffalo, New York on that Monday. Wow. We got a hundred inches of snow in our backyard in five days. Yeah. Right. Oh I know two blizzards back to back. <laughs> and so my doctor called and said, um, the next time we can fit you in is in three and a half weeks. Mm. What? Right. Three and a half weeks. No, I got to get it out of me. Right. And so I was standing by my front window, looking out at the storm in front of me, thinking about the storm inside of me. Mm. And the Holy spirit said to me, Carol, I've given you these three weeks to study every storm in the Bible and wow. to extract life principles. So that's my book, Storm Proof, where wow. I look at every storm in the Bible and we learn something from each one. Wow. So those are some of my books. Um, we could spend probably an hour unpacking each of those. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm writing a book myself uh, and Are it's you? not going to, it's, it won't be anything like yours. <laughs> it won't be Aww. good, uh, it, but I'm writing it. Um, and, and a lot of it deals with mental illness. Um, mm. As an, as an author, um, mm -hmm. I find that it's very tough to navigate um, stories in your life without, while, while being respectful um, have you found that as an author? I know this is a completely random question, but have you found as you, you have written, um, uh, you want to honor those who, um, so there was an individual in my life that was, uh, dealing with mental illness, a, a very pivotal individual. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of people that think very highly of her. I want to honor her and her mm -hmm. struggle, uh, because she was an amazing person while still telling my story. Have you found that in your life? You know, you mentioned mental illness. That's, that's such a, it's such a tough topic to talk about and still honor. Have you found that as you've written as an author? I know this is a random question. No, it's a great question, Aaron. And my answer is yes. And of course the way I handle it has evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. um, but so my standard right now, what I tell myself is, 
you know, so one thing you can do is change the names to protect the innocent, as they say. But if anybody could identify the person by the story and the person is still alive, Mm -hmm. I, I can't do it. Um, I I can be very general. I've had to be very general, Aaron. I'll be honest with you about a situation in our family um, that we've gone through as parents, because when you raise five children, you know, some of the face things you face are challenging. Right. Right. And there, there's a situation I would love to share, but I'm unable to share it and still honor the person. And so what I do is I just allude to it by saying, we went through a horrific situation in our family right? and it broke my heart as a mom, Mm. but God was there. Yeah. Just just like that. Um, so Aaron, I hear you that that is a real dilemma to honor people. And, but, but it's your story too, because it impacted you. Right. It, right. It stunted you or, or whatever it did to you. And that's your story. Right. Right. And I know that's not why you came on here today. This is probably an offline conversation. Oh, I'm good. Author, I love this. I love quote this. unquote author on my side, quote author on, or, you know, no quote author on your side. Um, but I think that's a conversation I'd love to have with someone because I, I think that's a, that's such a hard line to walk, but people get a book and they read it and they find, you know, they just breeze through things when it sounds like you and I have to navigate uh, storms whether it's in our own internal family or storms that shaped us, it shaped me, mm-hmm. it changed me, it made me, but I want to honor those seasons. Um, so all that to say, how are you today? You, you mentioned the storms. How are you today? I, you know, I'm great, Aaron. I, there's no cancer in my body. I, I had many surgeries and many foul treatments, <clears throat> but there's no cancer in my, in my body and the doctors can't believe it that I'm still alive. It was such an aggressive cancer. And so now I'm almost eight years out. So that's an only God thing, you know? And I don't know, Aaron, when you go through something like that and your life is on the line, then the rest of your life, the frustrations are small stuff. (laughs) Like nothing else matters because I'm alive. I don't have cancer. Um, Yeah. So that I'm, I'm doing great. And you know, Aaron, I do, do, do you have children? I do. I have a son and two daughters. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So, so you know the parenting thing. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, whenever you raise kids, you raise them a certain way, and you love mm-hmm. them unconditionally, and you celebrate um, their call and the uniqueness that's in each child. But kids grow up and make choices, right. and sometimes the choices they make don't always honor um, the lifestyle you brought them up in. Right. And so what do you do then? Mm-hmm. You carry on. Yeah. You love, you pray, you hope, you're kind. You're, um, you know, uh, you're the mom. You continue to love, but you pray and you hope at mm-hmm. the same time. Mm-hmm. So I'm great. Thank you for asking. No, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're great. It's always, you know, it's, it's such an important time and, and it's a season. I, I just saw a quote this week that talked about if you had 90 days to live, Like, like live, like you, what was the quote? It was live, like live the world. Like you want to leave the world. Mm. What a, what a powerful quote. Uh, I think, I think our, as you said, I I think our, our perspective shifts a whole lot Mm -hmm. when we're faced Mm -hmm. with different situations. Cause we COVID alone COVID uh, this Mm -hmm. whole last two years of a lot of our lives really shook up our world a little bit. When we think, we control everything. And the reality is we control nothing <laughs> It can be taken yeah. away in a minute. Right. Right. And you know, so when, when COVID hit America in March of, of 2020, I was out on the road speaking, promoting a new book. And I saw my schedule just fall like dominoes here. And like, nobody wanted you to come. It was like over. And so I rented a car and drove home because I, I couldn't get a flight. Mm. Um, And on the way home, I was praying, Lord, man, I'm alive right now in the middle of a pandemic. And Aaron, I got excited, not not about the pandemic, but that the Lord had chosen me to be alive during such a moment in history. You know, we all love that Esther quote. Oh, don't 
you were born for such a moment as this. Well, so were you. And so was I, mm -hmm. we were born to be alive during COVID. We were born to be alive during um, racial unrest. We were born to be alive when the media lies and politics are a mess and the international scene could explode at any minute. Any minute. This is our moment. Right. This is our time when God needs our voice, our resolve and our faith to make a difference in little ways and in big ways. Right. You know, Aaron, people might not believe this, but even I, and I, I get to do incredible things for the unshakable kingdom. There are days when I think, what's my purpose? Like, why am I here? Right. God, why did you create me? And so, Aaron, I'm still figuring that out. I don't know about you, but I'm still figuring out, right? <laughs> right? And so this is what I know. The top two things, I think they're tied for first place. The top two things to worship the Lord that, that like I am still breathing to sing, to, to glorify the Lord. Number two, I am still here to become more like Jesus. Right. So, so right. every day I have to reflect him. Mm -hmm. And, and then number three is, is right on their heels. And number three is to make a difference in somebody else's life. Right. So every day, if I can do those three things, it's a great day. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's scriptural. <laughs> you know, yeah. when I ask him the greatest commandment, it's like, you know, <laughs> love God, love yeah. your neighbors yourself. I mean, those three things fit mm -hmm. into that filter, uh, which is in, in scripture. And as long as you believe mm -hmm. scripture, which is true and accurate, then that's what we're here to do. And, uh, I often wonder why I, I do believe his hand is on the doorknob and he, and God's about ready to say, go get my children. But in the meantime, we're still here and right. uh, we, we have, we have work to do. That's why we're still here. Otherwise mm -hmm. we'd be gone. Uh, this would all yeah. be over with, but it, right, it's not right. time yet. And I trust God's timing. Um, the book, meanwhile, yes. speaking yes. of, right. Speaking, yes. of, meanwhile, speaking of the meanwhile, <laughs> speaking of the meanwhile, meanwhile, meeting God in the wait. Who, if that isn't ever a topic with it, I don't know who that doesn't affect. Um, mm -hmm. The wait, those last two words, mm -hmm. the wait. Uh, so mm -hmm. much of us are in the waiting, whether it's a new job, a, a family situation, a uh, uh, my son, my my nephew this week had a uh, motorcycle accident, and uh, today he's in the wait. Uh, he's going mm -hmm. to he was supposed to have surgery, and now that may not happen. Anyway, I think we're all walking through seasons in the wait. That's that mm -hmm. uh, that in between the dash, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about the book? Meanwhile, meeting God in the wait. Yeah. So, Aaron, as you've probably perceived by now, I love the Bible, and Absolutely. I've loved the word of God since I was a little girl. I grew up at the knee of a general of the faith. And I, Joseph has been my favorite Old Testament character since I was a little girl. Like nobody comes close. No. Not Ruth, not Esther, not Deborah. It's always been Joseph for me. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, well, many reasons, Aaron. First of all, his life story, um, which you can find in, in the last 13, 14 chapters of the book of Genesis reads like an unbelievable movie plot. Right. You Netflix know, this, series. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This boy who was, uh, his daddy's favorite and, and he, he was probably a little bit spoiled. I mean, we don't really know that we know that he was well loved. Um, so he was brought up in, in the, in a wealthy home for the time. And he was treated like royalty. And then his world imploded. His brothers bullied him. They, they beat him up. They took his coat away from him. They threw him in the pit. They sold him into slavery. Um, and the story doesn't get better from there. It gets worse. Mm -hmm. And so when you read Joseph's story, it, you think, how can all of these events happen in, in the life of one person, like can any person deal with that much trauma? Cause it was trauma. Mm -hmm. And yet Joseph continued to be a man of excellence, to be an encourager. He continued to listen to God, to be aware of God's presence. Um, and that's who I want to be, Aaron. I want to be Joseph. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when I read a book, 
I, I think, who am I in this story? Like when I read Gone with the Wind, I am not Scarlet. I'm Melanie, you know. Yeah. Um, when I read Little Women, I don't know if I'm Joe or not. I, but when I read this story, I am Joseph. Mm. I am the one that God gave this great life to. And then trauma happened. And it's up to me to decide how I'm going to live in the middle of trauma. It's up yeah. to me. Wow. And I think we've all trauma uh, could probably be in quotations. Uh, yeah. As many know, my, one of my favorite quotes is by an artist named uh, a musician named uh, John Mayer. And he says, you better take your so-called problems and put them in quotations. So trauma mm-hmm. is probably mm-hmm. a word we can put in quotations because for, for sure. every person who hears that it's different, but we all go through it and it's mm-hmm. not easy for anyone it's all mm-hmm. relative, right? I mean, it mm-hmm. depends on where you're at. But in the last two years, as we've mentioned, we've all gone through trauma. I mean, mm-hmm. we, mm-hmm. we had schedules, we had baseball games and you know, whatever else, school and jobs. And I just go down the list, you know, for everyone, it was a little different, but it, it hit us all. Um, we all got hit with trauma. And so mm-hmm. how do we deal in that time? And, and, you know, what I mean, so I think I think this book affects us all because we've all been there in the last two years. I don't think there's a person that can say, "Oh no, it doesn't affect me." Mm-hmm. It affects us all. It has affected mm-hmm. us all. Um, what's your best advice for those right now today? I mean, obviously we're coming out of the pandemic and we're getting mm-hmm. back to life and we're doing those things. What's your best advice for someone? Maybe this week. I, I know a few. Even today, myself, this week, a family member. Um, that are in the, the, they're in that waiting, they're in that unknown time. What's your best advice for them? Mm-hmm. Well, I think, you know, Aaron, people would expect me to say, read your Bible. Which, right. Yes. Yes. Please do. Awesome. Some people would expect me to say to turn on worship music. Yes. Yes. Please do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been seeing a trauma counselor over something we've gone through. Yeah. And one day she said to me, Carol, When I'm meeting with a person like you who's been through something difficult, I always know that they're going to turn the corner when they start investing their lives in in helping somebody else, in encouraging somebody else, in loving somebody else, in in practical ways. So, Erin, that's what I would say because Mm. that's – that's going to heal you. You know, there's so much about the brain and, and hormones that I don't understand that my trauma counselor does. And she said, you know, when you minister to somebody else, when you encourage them, when you hand a single mom a $20 bill, mm-hmm. when you take a widower out to lunch, when you mow your neighbor's yard, like it, cha- it raises your endorphin level wow. so you can cope better, right. so you can deal with your life better. So for your listeners today, if you have a broken heart, if you've been traumatized, quotation marks, if your life has not turned out the way you wanted it to turn out, that's my advice. Go go to Target and encourage somebody. Look for a young mom with little people and say to her, you're doing a great job. Right. And see what that does inside of you, because that's powerful. It really is. Wow. That's incredible. There's, uh, there's some amazing TikTok um, accounts that go out and do that. You know, there's a guy that really? buys a dozen flowers and he stands on the side of the road and he sees somebody and he just sees a, a woman walking by and he hands it to her. He says, I just want to let you know you're beautiful. Like, uh, and you see these people again, it's TikTok, so it's made for TV, yeah. but, uh, or maybe it's not, I don't know, but I think handing a rose to someone there, it doesn't always have to cost a lot of money because some mm-hmm. of us may not have those resources, but being kind is free. It's, right. It costs you nothing to be kind, um, right. you know, so if you have the resources, by all means, and you can do that, awesome. If you can't, mm-hmm. uh, it costs nothing to just be kind to other people. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Right. I love this conversation. Um, the book. So how, how do people find the book? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can buy the book. Meanwhile, of course, at my website, which is carolmccloudministries.com. It, Aaron, it's available on Amazon. Christian book distributors, um, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, you know, really wherever books are sold. Um, 
the one of the interesting components about this book, Erin, is that it's the type of book that also comes with a video series. Oh, so nice. if you want to do it in a small group or in a Sunday school class or, you know, wherever, there's that. Awesome. Um, so that there, it's an eight series teaching series um, and then the book, or you can just do the book on your own. My wife has an incredible village of a small group of, uh, of ladies that uh, uh-huh. just love each other so much. And they go and to your point, they go and they serve at a local dream center. They do all these things. Um, if they wanted to do that, how, how is the video available? Is it available on like YouTube or DVD or how do you do that? Yeah, it's, it's just downloadable either from our website, Carol McLeod Ministries or the publisher, which is Iron Stream Media. So um, you just download it and and watch it. It's not available in DVDs, but just downloads. Yeah. And most people don't have a DVD player anymore. I know, right? (laughs) I know. I don't. Yeah. (laughs) So I have a feeling that uh, there's a small group uh, that will probably be meeting in our home uh, that will be doing this study. Um, Because I have a feeling when she hears this. She's maybe my biggest listener. My wife is. So uh, she'll probably hear this and be like, we're doing that. Uh, And I I would recommend it. I'm actually very interested in doing it as well. Um, Where can they find your podcast? Because you're on a lot of you're on a lot of different platforms. So where can they find your podcast? What are they called and where can they find those? Yeah. So um, I have two podcasts. The Significant Women podcast is available everywhere. You know, iTunes, Google, Stitcher all the other platforms right. and, and that podcast, Aaron, significant women, I interview women and their nice. life stories. Some you'll recognize, you know, Rebecca St. James, people, Carol Kent and others are just like a cleaning woman who made a difference in my life. Right. My best friend from high school. So um, significant women is just my attempt to let women know that you matter, mm-hmm. you matter to the kingdom of God, you matter to eternity. And then my other one, my other podcast is titled, um, a jolt of joy. I love to be known for joy and that's only available on the charisma podcast network. And that's a Bible teaching podcast. So if you just want a daily dose of scripture, that would be a jolt of joy. Okay. How do we get to the charisma? Uh, what, what you just talked about, where do we get, where do we find that? Yeah, it's just charismapodcastnetwork.com okay. is is what it is. Uh-huh. And of course, when you go there, the podcasts are incredible and they're all faith-based and encouraging. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. You're on socials as well, right? I am. Where can we find I'm you on, on the social media networks? So on Facebook, I'm Carol McLeod, Bible teacher and author. And um, on Twitter and Instagram, just Carol McLeod. Um, you know, I, Aaron, social media is an incredible thing for an author. <laughs> it's an incredible thing for a believer in Christ that um, the we have this. Pla- oh, let me backtrack, Aaron. So when I was battling cancer, one of the mm-hmm. scriptures the Lord gave me was Acts thirteen thirty six, and it said, "And David, well, first of all, the Holy Spirit is still talking about David a thousand years." after he lived. Wow. Okay. Yes. And David, when he served the purposes of God in his own generation, then he went to sleep. Mm. So as I studied that scripture, I realized that we all have purposes that are unique to our generation. Mm -hmm. And if I'd been born before the uh, reformation, I would have been a scribe writing out scripture on parchment. If I'd been born 200 years ago, I would have gotten a horse and a wagon and gone across the Rocky mountains to tell Mm -hmm. people about Jesus. But that's not when I was born. I was born to have impact today. And so we have social media to tell the story of Jesus, to be kind, to encourage people. Like we don't need to talk about our, our dog poop or who we voted for or how we're mad at our kid's teacher. No, we can be a blessing to people. Wow. We can reach out in kindness. And Aaron, words are powerful. And that's what so, social media is. They are words. Words have the power to change a person's life. So let's do it. This is the purpose of God in our own generation. It belongs to us. 
Wow. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> no, what a, what an incredible soapbox because we do live in a generation. It's toxic. I mean, social media is toxic. Yes. If we allow it to be. Um, mm-hmm. you know, we we have the funny thing is we have the power to shape our our feeds, whether it's Facebook and the friends we decide to be friends with, quote unquote, uh, Twitter and our followers, uh, again, quote unquote, LinkedIn, all these platforms, we have the power to choose and shape our village. Um, I can tell you that I have people in my quote unquote village on Twitter that are not believers. And I, mm-hmm. I appreciate their some of them are fans of the same team I'm a fan of or whatever it might be. But, and that's the beauty of it. I love that part of it, but at the same time, it also provides me aspect. And I, I would hope that they would say the same thing for me. Maybe they're not a believer. Um, so I will without shame post, not be, not be insane about it, but post my life. Um, Mm -hmm. And the way that God is impacting my life, the good, the bad, the ugly, because I hope that that, what a powerful thing you just said, that we could have been born at any time, but we, we are born at a time when you and I are on this podcast right now, mm-hmm. wherever it's going to land. God yeah. knew that way in advance. And you and I are here today to influence whoever it may be we're going to influence. What a powerful mm-hmm. thing to say, especially in social media. So I hope everybody mm-hmm. that's listening heard that. Uh, we have the, we're here for, for this time uh, to influence uh, our followers, our friends, whatever, whatever every social media uh, app calls it. Um, mm-hmm. We're here for that. So, wow. Yes. Uh, incredible. This has been an incredible conversation. It really has. Thank you, Aaron. I've loved being here. Thank awesome. you so much for having me. Okay. So well, that's one last time, where can they find the book on, on, they're on all the platforms. The book is on all pl- platforms, correct? That's right. Amazon, Christian book, books, a million, Barnes and Noble. Though, I think those are the big ones. And of course my website, carolmccloudministries.com. Yeah. They can go there. And, you know, I'd love for your listeners to go to my website and, you know, read a blog, leave a prayer request. Um, but just see what's happening in our corner of the world. Awesome. And that's Carol M C L E O D. Correct. That's right. Ministries.com. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm so thankful for our time today. I'm so thankful that you, uh, everything is clear in terms of the cancer. And I hope that continues to be the case. Uh, I, I imagine you had a lot of perspective out of that. But uh, I'm so thankful that you're all clear and, and that things are going well for, the, for you there. Thank you, Aaron. I really appreciate it. I'm doing great. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Unscripted Podcast with your host, Aaron Conrad. Make sure to like, share, follow, and review on your favorite podcast platforms. Also, make sure to check out my song, Great and Mighty One, on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you find your music. We'll see you next time on Unscripted with Aaron Conrad. Mary redeemed a $50,000 cash prize playing Chumba Casino online. I was only playing for fun, so winning was a dream come true. Chumba Casino is America's favorite free online social casino. You, too, could have the chance to win life-changing cash prizes. Absolutely anybody could be like Mary. Be like Mary. Log on to ChumboCasino.com and play for free now. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited by law. 18-plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The voice in the preceding commercial was not the actual voice of the winner. 